What's good music producers? I'm Curtis King of Curtis King TV and I'm going to give you a tour of my streaming setup. It's been a highly requested video. Let's talk about it. Music producers, as you guys know, over the last year, I did a bit of a pivot into getting into streaming, more streaming on my YouTube than anywhere else. And as I've done that, I've done a lot of trial and error to make it really look good. Here's a clip of a stream that I do every week called Flocation. We bought the banus out, bought the banus out, we bought the banus out, cause this the outro, we bought the... Ugh. I think I want to half time this. So as you can see, it's a pretty clean stream. There's a lot of things that go into it, but for the most part, I wish somebody would have made a video specifically for me as a music producer, just so I'd know what am I looking at and what are my options. So let's break this down by the equipment all the way up to the broadcasting system that I prefer, all the way down to my computer and some external monitors and maybe some things for you to look out for as you start to set up your streaming setup. Let's get into it. Let's break this down into a few different sections, starting with the kind of cameras that I'm using. Currently, I'm using two of the same camera, the Lumix GH4. I used to use the Logitech HD 1080p to get started because it was a cheaper webcam, but I just felt like I needed to step it up, especially if you're gonna have an experience that lasts for a few different hours. I mean, it's different for gamers, especially if producers are gonna look at you. So I was like, you know what? Let me make sure that I get a really decent camera. And I'm telling you the Lumix GH4, I mean, they have the GH5, which is what I'm actually shooting the B-roll of this video with, but they're just beast of cameras. Now, a warning, sometimes they're a little bit sketch on low lighting, so it really, depends upon you understanding your DSLR and then understanding the role that sometimes your lenses play in that. But for that, the Lumix GH4 really has got the job done for me. I love it. It's a sharp picture. It looks really cinematic and it just really helps with what I'm trying to accomplish. All right, so let's talk about lenses now. The lens that I use is a close-up 25 millimeter Lumix four thirds lens. It runs you about 147 on Amazon. And mind you, I have links to all this stuff in the description, but I love this one because it's probably my cleanest looking lens. It just makes the experience feels like the audience is actually there, right? They're talking to you in person. And so it's my go-to lens, especially when I get close-ups of things and I wanna get just those painstaking details. The next lens that I use is a 14 millimeter wide angle pancake lens that is about 197 on Amazon. And this one comes really in handy for that camera angle that I have that moves back and forth on a slider. It really captures the room and it makes you feel like you're getting the entire picture when you're watching the live stream. So for this one, I love it because it helps whenever I'm shooting my podcast, whenever I'm doing how to videos, it's just a really versatile lens. Next, let's talk about the tripods that are holding these cameras up. For starters, I use an Amazon basic 60 inch, super, super cheap tripod because it's on the camera that really doesn't move. It just kind of sticks there and the camera's not too heavy. So I could kind of go a little bit cheap on that one. That's about 27 bucks. The other tripod that I have is a Manfrotto tripod. That is a pretty durable tripod that is holding up this slider, which is just, it's, it's heavy. It's like 20, 25 pounds. And then also I have an additional tripod supporter, these arms that are on it from a company called Mully Ocean. They're a camera slider support arm tripod. And so as you can see here, it's kind of holding on to the other tripod to stabilize it. And as it moves back and forth for all those hours, we're not having everything just fall apart. This was a little bit of a task to put together, but I mean, it was worth it when you see what it looks like in the live streams. And while we're on the subject of sliders, let's talk about the slider that I use. It's a newer motorized camera slider. I love newer products. They run a little bit cheaper than their competitors, but they're really quality equipment. And with this motorized camera slider, my biggest worry was that it was going to be loud and be picked up on my camera as I'm doing my live streams. It's not the situation at all. This thing runs super, super smooth and it costs about 289 bucks on Amazon. Another newer product that I use are these ring lights. These ring lights are super light and super durable. They have lasted for a long time and they get the job done when it comes to lighting up your camera and lighting yourself up as you're being shown on camera. These are the 18 inch dimmable ring lights. They run you about 90 bucks on Amazon. So they're not that expensive 
and they really make your setup look like the lighting is just looking really dope. In addition to the ring lights, I found these diffusers, these uh, color diffusers that you can get from a company called Leno Studio. They're 18 inch for your ring lights. They fit right over your lights comfortably. They're cloth, so they're not gonna really have any issues with overheating or catching on fire, but they really just add a nice little color and tone to your video so it looks really professional and cinematic. This in collaboration with some of the LUTs that I add on my OBS, and I'll do a whole OBS setup later on, just make it look really good when you're seeing it live. One last detail about the cameras is that, you know, you can go cheap on things, like I said, the tripod sometimes, but you do not wanna go cheap on your HDMI connection via your DSLR to whatever you're using. Maybe you're using a cam link. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but you do not wanna go cheap on your HDMIs and you preferably don't wanna go over 15 feet. Once you go over 15 feet, it does lose a little bit of its quality. There's many videos that break that down for you, but I had to learn that the hard way. I have way too many HDMI cables and the ones that I got is actually from a company called Ugreen and they run a little bit more expensive than the usual ones, but I'm telling you, you will be grateful for it. Your audience will be grateful for it when they see how clean of a signal that you are putting out there. Okay, since we mentioned cam links, let's go ahead and break down why this is even a necessity to have. Your cam links is really how you're going to get any kind of video from your camera into your computer in a clean signal with low latency as possible, right? The most popular one is Elgato. They have a DSLR connector called a cam link that I got one that is in 1080p. There's a 4K version that I kind of have mixed feelings about because it really had a delay. I had all kinds of issues with the one that I got. And maybe it's because I got an early model, I don't know. But the one that I have is a 1080p. It's really hard to find sometimes, but uh, it's by Elgato and it can run you about $117 used to about $200, but it's well worth getting. The other Elgato that I have is an HD 60S Plus. You want to spend that extra money on the S Plus instead of getting the other model below it because the latency, the low latency, and when I'm saying latency, I'm basically talking about how fast the camera catches up to the actual real time action, right? You see sometimes a delay and when you say something and the words are moving in your mouth and the beats going and really you have a delay and everything going on. This is important to have because it really gets rid of a lot of that. So that Elgato HD 60 S plus is going to run you about 200 bucks on Amazon as well. Thirdly, this Elgato stream deck, this 15 key version, this is the ultimate cheat code. This thing allows me to have control over my entire studio because I have everything set up with like the Wi-Fi plugs and I have everything linked to this from even my nano leaf lights to my cameras turning on to my TV. Anything that has some kind of Bluetooth connection or connection to the internet, you can find a way to set this up through using third party apps like if this, then that. But this stream deck is so clutch because when I get things coming in like Super Chat, I have it set up to where I have sirens going off. I can easily push a button and then change the lights from the sirens to my regular chill out lights that I use when I'm making beats. Or I can change camera angles. I can change the intro video. I can play music in the background while I'm talking. It's just so many things that you can do. And so I upgraded to the 15 key, but you can do so much with the six key version, which is significantly cheaper. Now the 15 key version is 150 bucks. The six key is 129. But if you're just starting out, just start with the six key, or you can actually even use your cell phone if you're not in a position to go ahead and get that. Lastly, the broadcasting system that I use, no matter how many headaches it gives me sometimes, is OBS. OBS is all reliable. It's the one that I'm used to. I know that there's competitors out there that have great features like Streamlabs and all these different ones, but I have a love-hate relationship with OBS, and it just really gets the job done, especially when you understand it. And once you understand that open broadcast system, you'll be able to transfer that knowledge to pretty much anyone that you choose. Next, let's talk about the audio setup that I'm using. For my audio interface, I'm using the Focus 2i2 third generation. It'll run you about $160 on Amazon. Now, you obviously have seen this before if you're a music producer, if you've been looking at other cookup videos, you know this is probably the most popular one and it's for a pretty damn good reason. This thing is super durable. I don't run into many issues with this. 
right? Your story may be a little bit different, but I don't run into many issues. I stick with these for years and years on years and don't really have any issues. It gives me a clean signal. It lets me manipulate the latency as I'm going live and I can really get it to me sounding like how I sound in real time. For my microphone, I'm using an AKG Perception 420. That'll run you about $199 on Amazon. And it's just a really, really clean microphone. I'm actually recording this voiceover using this microphone. It's one that I've been using for years for rap vocals, for voiceovers, for anything that I want to get a clean, but also something that respects the low ends of my voice. And it kind of has a really good way of adjusting to whatever your timbre or tone of your voice is. That's the microphone that I go to. It's not that expensive. Like I said, it's about $199 on Amazon. So definitely pick it up if you're in a position to do that. Next, the pop filter I'm using, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but the one I'm using is a Sterling Audio Pop Filter. That's about 24 bucks, but you can get the ones on there that are like nine bucks. But literally it's just a piece of nylon and plastic, no matter which one you get. That helps to protect the ears of your listeners from the P's and the S's that are really, really sharp. Uh, it's something that you definitely want to invest in, especially if you plan on doing vocals or just some kind of vocal performance on your live streams. Next, the type of headphones that I'm using, the Yamaha HPH MT7. These are super fire. They give you a really accurate signal on the low end, no artificial bass, but also you're able to hear those mids and highs pretty damn clean you know when you want to hear the snap on a snare and i do all of my streams in my headphones so when i'm making beats it's important that i'm hearing what i'm putting together and that it's accurate to what the listener is hearing on whatever experience they have whether it's their computer their tv or their cell phone it's important for me to get a clean signal so those are the headphones that i use next we got to talk about the mother of all this the most important aspect of my streaming setup i don't think it would be able to handle two cameras and two cam links and all the stuff I have going on had I not made the biggest investment into this particular computer the CLX gaming desktop AMD Ryzen 9 and I'll leave a link so you can see the specs on it as of the recording of this I think that they may be out of this particular computer on the website that I got it from but I'm sure you can find it look it's well worth the investment it's a few racks it's almost about three racks but it's well worth the investment that you make on that one my internet is so crucial i have spectrum internet spectrum cable where i'm at and i have the most expensive internet that you can get on there it's not a flex i promise it's not a flex it's a necessity to do all this streaming stuff that we're doing so i highly suggest that you look into that you got to make sure that the internet is taken care of that is your foundation and if you're in a position to do it matter of fact let me correct that you need to be in a position to get a direct LAN connection wi-fi is just not going to be enough especially if you're trying to get your fl studio whatever your dot is to look clean in 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second which is what i shoot it in you got to make sure that you get a direct connection so that you have less drop offs and you're not losing frames using YouTube's live stream system. Lastly, let's talk about the monitors that I'm using. Now, I'm not using a traditional computer monitor, and I know that that may be blasphemy for those who are super techy, but I love looking at the TV screen when I'm cooking up. And the one that I got, I actually bought it off the homie one time. It's 43 inch LED TV. Uh, it's 4K, it's not a smart TV, so it was a little bit cheaper, but that's the one that I've been using. It's really easy on the eyes. Like I said, it's 4K, so as I'm doing some video editing also, it just looks really good and it's something that it adjusts as the day goes on. So after 6 p.m., it automatically starts to adjust to my eyes so that it's not giving me those lights that are really harsh and I'm able to do long hours without having a strain upon my eyes. So really important to make that investment since you're gonna be looking at that most of the time on the streams. Secondly, I have a second screen that I use now and I got this more recently, but it's a 40 inch Android smart TV that I use really as an extension of my screen so that I can do all the OBS business on that side as well as not disrupt the experience that the viewer has on the main screen that they're seeing on the stream. So as much as you may not need to get that now, that may be you getting your laptop or a backup computer or an old computer just to be an extender, maybe go HDMI to HDMI connection just so that you have an accurate 
view of what's going on because you don't want your chat to get bored and if they have questions maybe sometimes your audio goes out and they want to let you know it's important to see what's going on or if somebody gives to your super chat you want to be able to thank them and just be highly engaged in the process but that pretty much is the setup I mean, there's other things like the nano leaf lights that are just really some extra lighting in the room that are not necessary to make the room look cool to a certain degree uh, and the videos to a certain degree, but they're not absolutely necessary. But I just want to make sure I gave you a rundown of my equipment. If you have any other questions, like I said, the description is going to have links to all the equipment I talked about. But if you have any other questions, feel free to hit the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Them. Okay, music producers, so as you see, it's a lot of equipment. You don't need everything that I have in here, but I wanted to give you at least an idea of what I have going on here. Uh, mind you, with all this LED and everything going on here, another disclaimer is that it gets pretty hot in here. So in my streams, uh, yes, yeah, it's about 79 to 80 degrees sometimes. And uh, it's because it's a smaller room. And as I advance this, I'll do more videos, specifically a video on my actual OBS settings because I've tried many different ones. Uh, and also too, how that I'm able to get recording straight from my microphone that has like little to no latency when I'm recording live using FL Studio. That's a whole nother headache. And I actually use a plugin called ASIO Link Pro. I'll give you a breakdown of that. Other than that, I wanna say thank you for watching today's video. If you wanna come join the stream that I do every single week where I cook up beats from scratch, sometimes I make songs in this live streams. These streams go for sometimes six to eight hours. So you can go in, take a lunch break and come back if you want, but we have a lot of fun in there. If you wanna join us, it's every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time on this very channel, so make sure not only that you subscribe, but you hit that notification bell so that you know the next time we'll go live. Like I always say, in this life, you will not be full of life and see so you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, it's Curtis King of SlapExperts.com. Have a good one. Look up, Nazi. Say cheese. <laughs>